today, we got Tyler Lydon from NBA power forward to a power entrepreneur. Mm, That's going to work. It's just going to work. We'll make it happen. Because it was PF to PE and you're doing physical education. It's like a double entendre or something. <laughs> you're a genius. I know. <laughs> Listen, genius. what I lack in height, I make up for in it. I like it. Yo, 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 oh, you yo. fucking know your things. <laughs> Guys are looking sharp. Zach Dingy, Tony Capoletti. Two Three Legs Podcast, where we share business tips, interview experts, and travel the world. This week on Two Dudes, Three Legs. Well, let's start with this guy right here. Where's this? So, Tyler Lydon is coming on our live event in, what's today's day? About two weeks. Not even two weeks. We got like 10 days until this event. So, we're doing a little pre-interview, but if you haven't got tickets yet... If you haven't gotten tickets yet, we'll put the link down below. You can click on this. We have a live event here in the Hudson Valley. But anyway, we're At doing a pre-interview with our boy Tyler Lydon. So I'm going to give a little backstory here before we get into it. Well, you knew Tyler, right? I did know Tyler. I did know Tyler. We used to play, well, I actually never played with him. He was my coach, him, his brother, and the other guy who we've interviewed on this podcast for, Justin Cooper. They were my coach for AAU basketball. Tyler was, at the time, like, it was right before you went to Syracuse, I think. Yeah, I would have been so, a senior in high school yeah. still. So. Uh, you would just torment us, and you would kind of just practice with us <laughs> yeah, and destroy yeah. us all. Yeah. <laughs> we were all like, what the f*** is wrong with this guy? <laughs> but yep. anyway, so we're going to get into a lot of stuff that uh, – or sorry, we're going to try to share a lot of the cool stuff at the event live, but we'll get into some other things now. So let's start with some simple things. Why did you choose to go to Syracuse? Um, it really came down to the assistant coach that was there at the time. Mm -hmm. His name's Mike Hopkins. He actually was just at um, University of Washington as a head coach, just got fired, unfortunately. Um, uh, but an awesome guy. And it was really like the whole recruiting process honestly got super annoying. I dealt with the same shit over and over and over again. I felt like he was probably one of like three coaches that were really sincere and real with what they were saying to me. Mm -hmm. So when I took that into consideration, plus it's, you know, two and a half hours from home, all my parents and families and everybody can, they can all come to the games. I was like, it's kind of a no brainer. Got it. Yeah. Speaking of which, who do you think is going to win March Madness this year? It's tough. I don't know. I think UConn, but okay. I don't know. I, that's just an easy pick, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. Everyone's like, yo, what's your f***ing bracket? I don't know. <laughs> you don't do <laughs> it? Just fill it. No, I do, but I'm uh, like, fill it out. You're probably going to do better than I am. I don't <laughs> yeah, there's no, you there's get no, no insider yeah, secret. Zero. Just zero. from playing college. Take us through that, though, when you're getting recruited into Syracuse. You said it's a pain in the ass. It's, it, I think, like, if I'm getting recruited into a, a big name team like that, it's the most exciting time in my life. Yeah, no, it is. It, it's it's just hectic because, like, you have so many moving parts. You're getting, like, as a 16-year-old kid, my phone, the, the times um, where they could call you were different all the time. So it would be, like, a three-day period where coaches could call you. And in that three-day period, it was, like, non-stop. And so when I, was, um, when I was a freshman in high school at Pine Plains, it was, like, the first time my name kind of got out there and I was getting a little bit of offers here and there. Um, I played AU in that spring, and then I kind of blew up a little bit. And it was, like, dude, at midnight our house phone was going nuts like non-stop until like one in the morning my mom finally got to the point it's hilarious she tells the story she's like i picked up the phone i was like i don't know who the f this is stop calling us right now and just click what? Then, i would have been would like mom again. that might have been my <laughs> yeah my path to a million billion yeah. dollars yeah it's crazy i'll take every call so it's like it's cool to go through that obviously and want to be wanted like you, everybody wants that shit. Yeah. right it's just there's, there's a lot that goes on and then you get all the same shit so it's like you don't really know what's true and what's not. They're mm -hmm. all saying the same thing. Oh, you're going to come here and play 35 minutes a game. It's like, am I really yeah. going to play 35 minutes? <laughs> could you minutes? smell the bullshit that early on? Some when, of them you could. Young? Yeah, some of them you could. But I also, I was fortunate enough I had the right people in my corner. And now there's like you get all these kids now that, and you see it all the time. There's a lot of them that just unfortunately have the wrong people in their corner and give them the wrong advice. And then they end up at a school and they transfer four times. And it's like, what are we fucking doing here? Yeah. Now? Well, you, you're you rooted in, like, you come from a small town of solid family and, like, good yeah. foundation, good family values, all of that. So that helped you throughout the process? For sure. that was They were just, like, my rock. And honestly, like, half the time, I wouldn't even be answering calls. It would be, like, my parents or whatever, you know, the situation was. And me and my older brother, Zach, super close. So I was always looking to him for guidance. And so I, I was really fortunate in that sense. But, yeah, it definitely it got me through the process for sure. Got yeah. it. So you choose Syracuse. Yep. Let's talk about the success in Syracuse and moving forward from there. Yeah. Um, well, freshman year got there. We went to the Final Four. So obviously you have like 
top, you're at the top of the top at that point. You're and like, you're yeah, how I remember old? that, dude. At that time, I was 19. That's wild. So, like, my final game my freshman year, I'm playing in front of 76,000 people Bro, in, a, in a football stadium. When I was 19, I was final four at the bar every <laughs> night. Like, <laughs> right. What? Yeah, no, it was crazy. I mean, I remember we were in, um, we were in the Houston Texans stadium, and... Dude, you're shooting in like your practice before, you know, the day before the game. In the fall, they're, in the, they're on the f-ing court. There's a draft of win because the stadium's just so f-ing big. Mm. So you're like, what the hell? And the kid, um, I don't know if you know Buddy Heald at all. Yeah, he played. Um, he plays now with the who's he with now? I don't know. He's with the 76ers, I think, or something. He like was that. with 76ers for a while. I don't know. I'm Whoever he's with now. Idea, so he's yeah. from the Bahamas. So he was like, dude, I grew out up outside, like playing on the beach where there was a breeze. So he was. F-ing money nasty with it. like i'm shooting to the right and hoping it drifts that's in. crazy yeah, like, there's a breeze because no, it literally the was insane. stadium so big it was insane it that's was insane. crazy to think about yeah so i mean obviously you come off of that year right and um at that time i was like kind of being considered a first round pick it was up in the air your freshman um, year yeah my freshman year so there was a chance i was gonna leave um and me and my family kind of had brief conversations about it and was like let's just go back you know so I ended up going back. I knew I, the biggest thing for me was I was still skinny at that point. I needed to put on like a good 15, 20 pounds. Yeah. So I went into my sophomore year, did just that. Um, and our team ended up being really solid. So on paper, we were like top 13, I think, to start that year, mm-hmm. um, which was great, obviously. And then we just ended up honestly having a shit year. I didn't play like up to the standards that I probably should have. And uh, it still was like time for me to get out of there, though. I was ready to Your second reach that next left. level. Yeah. 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 So When you were at Syracuse, What's it like to go from Pine Plains, a small town, to Syracuse, where you have 76,000 people watching you and you're the shit? Yeah. What was that like? Uh, <laughs> I didn't handle it very well. Of course not. I just, you're 19. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, more so in the sense, like, I didn't want anyone to talk to me. Mm. I didn't want to go anywhere. I didn't. I just wanted to be a fucking, I wanted to be wallpaper. I wanted to just blend in. Interesting. You know? And so, huh. like, you know, as a kid, you want to go to a party or something and it yeah. was like the second you walk through the door not to sound like arrogant or anything but everybody just pulls the fucking phone out so yeah. i'm like this is not for me right. so zach was at Cortland with justin yep and uh instead i would go to Cortland on the weekends or whenever we didn't have practice the next day if i wanted to like let loose a little bit and i'd yeah. go see those guys so for me i i did not like the attention and then going hmm. into sophomore year was even worse because i was like preseason all american nominations and like all this shit so i'm like fuck i like couldn't go anywhere Mm. yeah it's crazy interesting so you didn't you didn't want it at all none of it zero none none not do you feel like you were more known at syracuse than you were in the nba like for sure your popularity absolutely yeah i mean the nba i was i'm a nobody yeah yeah. but like but still you have the title of like you were an nba player for sure yeah no it it, it obviously goes a long way yeah um and there's a lot of respect that comes with that name and that title um but at syracuse like i can go up to syracuse now and like walk in any store and everyone's like holy shit it's tyler light yeah what's up (laughs) (laughs) that's dope do you get it because you were always like a local legend i feel like at pine plains you guys went to state championship and yeah. lost yeah, right in uh, pine plains okay insane we yeah. lost but we lost he yeah. still looks pissed about it yeah um that's the worst loss i've ever had in my life isn't that crazy you think it'd be like you think you'd be more upset about what happened yeah but it's no. like later, bring it to your it's hometown the, it's the yeah. earlier stuff yeah well if i could go back to any it's always the case playing it'd be pine plains that was like the most fun Bro, there's just nothing like carefree ball. yeah nothing that's where like all these kids now they're all like down and fucking depressed playing for their coaches and stuff. I'm like, I had the most fun ever at Pine Plains. What was okay? So just give us a little 30 seconds on the Pine Plains game that you guys lost. What? Why was it so bad? Like, was it a blowout? Did you guys lose by? We have three guys that are six eight, right? Yeah, six nine at the studs. time. Me, and my brother, another kid was like six seven, whatever. Justin six two, and then our other starting guard was fucking six foot. So we're huge. And the other <laughs> team, Lake George, that we played, had one kid that everybody knew because he averaged 40 points a game. Mm. And we're like, just stop him. We win the game. Easy. So we sat back in a 2-3 zone. No, and he went like, lights out. We had a lot of just minor mistakes. Didn't mm-hmm. shoot the ball well. Of course. Kinda, yeah, just had a shitty game, honestly. How the – bro, how do you get – has Pine Plains ever even been close to that since I you guys have left? So. No. Oh, how God, do you no. get – no. How do you get almost <laughs> every, a starting five in a regular local high school – with a town that has, I don't know, yeah. a population of a thousand. Like a fucking yeah. Disney movie, bro. bro. His, the, t- how much how much is the population of Pine Plains? A thousand know. people? It's gotta I be think like we looked it up the other day. Yeah, yeah. there's like one stoplight, that's it. Yeah, one there's one stoplight, and you get five guys that yeah. are over 6'3". Yeah. 
that year they did someone I don't know how they found the stat oh. or why they looked it up, but we were a half an inch shorter as a starting lineup than the Brooklyn Nets. That's crazy. What? <laughs> Which was wild. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. yeah. That's a Bro, I played stat. at Arlington High School where 4,000 kids in the school. We yeah, had a, that's as many people <laughs> in our graduating class we had in your whole town. Yeah, yeah. It's wild. And we had one guy who was 6'3 on yeah, my senior yeah, team. Yeah. But we'd Damn. also, like, we'd go play, like, Poughkeepsie and all the bigger schools. I mean, we'd beat them by 30. Yeah, you destroy them. Yeah. You guys were insane. Yeah. Um, yeah, we choked. All right. Anyway, Wild. so let's get back into the college life. You didn't really, you weren't partying much. You didn't do any of that. You got no crazy Syracuse stories. Unfortunately, not. No, no I was pretty low key. Like I said, yeah. I would always just go to Cortland. That sounds like he, he's got something he can't even talk. About. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. No, I wish. Sophomore year too, like going in, I got a little bit of partying out of the way, like freshman year, you know. But sophomore year, I was so locked in on just trying to get to the league that I didn't want any parts of it. I just. Why do you in. think you ended up doing worse your sophomore year than your freshman year? Way too much pressure. Mm -hmm. I heard I you was, say that in an interview. Actually. I was always like, even going back to Pine Plains with Zach and Justin, I was the third option there. Those guys were the ones going out and scoring, and they were the guys. I was just going and getting 20 rebounds and 10 blocks a game and scoring when I could dunk on somebody, you know? Mm -hmm. So then same thing even at prep school. I ended up being the guy, but it still was a situation I was never used to, ever. So... This is now me on the biggest stage coming off of a final four year and I'm the guy like the team is mine. Um, and that's just I couldn't fucking handle it. I just put way too much pressure on myself. Well, it's easy to believe mm. you're young, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a lot of pressure for a young yeah. guy. I heard especially uh, having thoughts about the NBA. Yeah, right. And I never thought that was honestly a possibility until like freshman year final four when people are like, hey, like Carmelo was in an interview. And he's like that lining kid. He's a lottery pick. I'm like the fuck <laughs> Carmelo Anthony yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, crazy, crazy to hear so the ex you told us about the excitement of getting recruited uh into Syracuse now it's got to be another level when yeah. you're getting recruited into the NBA take us there yeah um so basically for me once we played we played in the NIT tournament my sophomore year the second we lost the game I had my whole apartment packed up and I was ready to go home so I was like, fuck it. I ain't finishing this semester out. I reached out to some of the school, um, some of the teachers and shit for the classes. I was like, hopefully I can get some of the credits online. But I immediately uh, left for Chicago where my agency was based and we start a whole pre-draft process. So they bring in their eight to 10 guys um, who are going to be in the agency, obviously. And you just fucking grind for whatever it is, five, six, eight weeks. I forget how long it was. Um, so I immediately left, immediately started that. And then you go through a whole team workout process, interviews at the combine, like the whole nine yards with that, where uh, it's, that's pretty stressful. Um, so did all that stuff and then draft came around. Tyler, how does that stress materialize for you? Like, what's the nighttime like? What's like, what is going through your mind every night when you're in this like eight week intensive boot camp? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was it was a lot because number one, I'm from the sticks and now i'm living in chicago in a high rise so i'm like what i don't even know i don't have an outlet to just get away from basketball for mm -hmm. a second so for me that was always super hard to handle mm. um so like me and my, i bought a fucking xbox which i never played xbox <laughs> and me and my boys just play call of duty to just get away um but it was hard i honestly had to go see like a sports psychologist because i was like fucked up mentally i'm like i don't know how to handle this i need somebody to show me the proper tools to get through this and stay confident and not you know fold to the pressure again um so i did that and it helped a little bit but it was still a, it was a crazy time that needs to be sponsored by xbox that answer <laughs> yeah literally yeah right that should do you ever feel a sense of like imposter syndrome like that time in your life happened and you can't even really or do you or do you do you feel very physically attached to that time in your life um Honestly, I'm kind of indifferent about it. I don't know. Being the person I am and I think how I grew up, I try not to even think about it. I, I, it just was like I was always stressed. I was always anxious. So I honestly, like, every time I could, I was like, I want to get away from that moment, which is kind of crazy. There's a lot that I don't even really remember about that process because I was just so stressed out. Well, stress can be a good fuel. Uh, yeah, we, for sure. we know how that part of the story for ended sure. up. Yeah. So it's like, you end up being a first round yep. draft pick. That's crazy. When do you find that out? I have no, I have no idea how that would work. Um, about two minutes before everybody else does. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I um, I could have went to the draft. Um, they invite like a select few guys. I think it's anybody that, that that's projected in the first round. They they um they invite you to go down to the draft. Other than that, you got to like sit in the stands with the fans basically if you yeah. want to be there and walk across the stage. 
Um, so I got invited down and I chose to just stay at home. So me and my family, we uh, threw a little party. The whole family came over and uh, friends and shit like that. And um, my agent actually surprised me there. He was supposed to go to the draft in the city, came up to my house instead. And he was sitting next to me. He got a phone call and he's like, all right, you're up next. I was like, what? Holy shit. All right, here we go. Damn, yeah. bro. Yeah. So he's tapping me on my leg. At trying that to, moment, yeah. Oh, probably. For sure. Yeah, for sure. What's With, going through your head? Um, honestly, I was just trying to maintain my coolness, but I was, I'm like, you're going the next day to whatever team drafts you. So I'm like, I, I could be in Wisconsin. I could be in California. It's I could like be with pure the chaos. The only benefit I think that I had was I did really well with the Lakers pre-draft and they had the 27th pick. And then I killed it, um, at the Milwaukee Bucks pre-draft too. And they were the 17th. So basically they give you a range and they're like, all right, you're going to go from 17 to 27. Mm -hmm. The Lakers called my agent the day before and said, if Tyler's still on the board at that point, we're taking him. He's ours. So I knew I was going in the first round at that point, but I just didn't know where. Um, so I was still on edge and just trying to figure it all out. That's and, wild. Yeah. It's fucking crazy. It's Think making thoughts rush through my head. Are you, yeah. are you even thinking about money at that? Point? no no not one bit that's I mean, all I, I could think of i don't know yeah yeah it, i mean it's, it's obviously it's hard not to i never i never went to the nba like for the money i just was like that's my dream um, right it obviously is a really nice side perk for me it. that's so <laughs> it, that's so such a strange thought because basketball has never been my dream yeah. maybe being a basketball i could fucking <laughs> never <laughs> even imagine so yo yo how many um how many drafts have there ever been how many years of the nba have existed fuck i gotta look that up I like 80 no years like yeah, 80, 90. 90. okay the and then, 75th anniversary was like two years ago. okay so I let's say 75 yeah. and then how many uh uh pit rounds are there in the draft two there's only two rounds yeah in the nba draft there's only 32 teams yeah damn so two you're rounds. talking about you're within a class of like there's like not a lot of people on earth who have. Oh no, the, I think the number picked. of NBA players ever that stepped foot and played in a game is like three thousand. And the craziest like thing that. is, in America, I think that's the most like generally played sport in the. I yeah. don't know if it's the hardest to get into the NBA, but like when everyone plays basketball, I feel like nobody's yeah. like. Yeah. Oh, I like I'll go hoop at the court or I'll go at the YMCA. You know what I mean? For sure. And then there's so many people that are trying to get to the next level. But how many people from high school even play in college, and how many from college even play in the NBA? Uh, yeah, you know? I think the the percentage is like point zero 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 three percent ever yeah. get to like the NBA, and it's like point zero three ever make it to college right. or something or two percent. When did you like, think it was like? When did you know it could be real? The NBA? Yeah. Like, it, was it was really. It was like during that Final Four run. In, at Syracuse yeah, freshman at year, Syracuse. got it. That was when my name was being tossed around, like, and articles are coming out. Is he leaving? Is he staying? And that was the first time I ever even honestly thought about it. Um, I was getting like recognition nationally for some stuff, you know, doing well in the ACC at mm -hmm. times and shit like that. And um, but there was nothing really about the draft until that run. Why that didn't you go shit. your first year? I just knew I needed. I wasn't physically ready, so I was like, I want to be able to go and try to play right away. Yeah. You know, as a pick i don't want to have to go sit out a year because i need to get stronger or i'm not ready i just i wanted to go and try to be locked in and play right away which is obviously a yep. lot harder than yeah anyone thinks but. so this is a question for you've been asked a million times but what's the difference between before you got in the nba what, what you thought it was going to be and then after you got well, how much different was it um basketball wise nothing i like anticipated a lot and i felt right. like i was in a good mental space basketball wise but the business side it was crazy it was insane yeah that's probably that's honestly like a big reason why i stopped playing it like did it take the fun away from For basketball sure. yeah. 100 uh, not even a question i like couldn't watch an nba game or basketball for like mm. i didn't watch it like damn it took ride. that bad of a oh, taste yeah. in your mouth yeah, yeah, yeah. so playing was fine you were okay with the pressure of being on that yep. Yep. on that new court Yep. but okay so bring us to what in business made it so bad um there's a lot to go into it but it was basically as a as a first round pick you're guaranteed so many years on your contract depending where you're at it also affects how many years you're guaranteed on the contract so if you're like a lottery pick you might get four years guaranteed if you're the end of the first round which i was you get two years so going into my second year so um, just real quick break yep. that down so you're you're guaranteed two years contracted with that organization yep. 
meaning they can't get rid of you like you show they could, up. they could but like that money is guaranteed you so if i was traded from the nuggets to the raptors like my contract's still good for two years oh that's wild yeah, yeah. Mom. okay and then what type of money are we talking about are you at liberty to share that yeah, I think my first year was like 1.5 mil, and then the second year was like 1.7. And or you're like that. 20 years old. 21 at that time now, yeah. I wouldn't have lived. I yeah, would have made it, was, it yeah. out. <laughs> my, my financial advisor, who I'm still with, he's the fucking man, but he was like, I don't have like regular people that spend the amount that you do. Like, I just, I just don't spend anything. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, how do you find these people? How, how, you know, you get drafted in people are coming to you yeah. left right and center yeah. i'm sure and then like how do you decide who's good for me who's on my side and who's here to get in my pocket um just kept my circle super super small like realistically i didn't have anybody that i wanted to talk to and if they wanted to talk to me they were almost going through like my family right and, okay yeah like then no one was giving out my number if i was on instagram i was deleting all any dms that people were sending all that shit. so yeah. my circle was kept super super tight what was the most starstruck you ever were in the nba playing against I, anyone no i get anyone? that all the time and at that point i'm now like lebron i gotta go guard him sure yeah. but like that's my competitor. You yeah, know? You didn't I didn't really at that anything. point too. You're also like, I don't feel like I'm that much worse than he is. Obviously mm. yeah. in the grand scheme of things I am. But like when you're stepping foot on the floor and shit and you're guarding the guys, you're like, ah, fuck that. Yeah. I can guard you. And you you, you got to switch edge. that yeah, mentality. You have too. to, have yeah. to. I mean, I was like excited to meet some guys and be around them. Like I grew up a Knicks fan. So mm -hmm. Wilson Chandler was a teammate when I was drafted to mm -hmm. the Nuggets. He played for the Knicks, grew up watching him. So I'm like the first or second day I'm doing recovery and I'm in the cold tub and he walks in and I'm like, What's up, Wilson? <laughs> this is fucking sweet. You know, I'm texting my boys and shit. Yeah. So, I mean, I wasn't, I wouldn't really say there was like anybody in particular that I was like, holy shit. You know? Right. Got it. Who was the best guy you played with on your team? Nikola Jokic. Got by it. By far. Oh, yeah. He's an MVP. Yeah. Now. He's, he's, he's the best player in the world. Yeah. By far. That's a hot take. Were you, hit, were you, no, he's a center. Okay. Never mind. Yeah. You still played power forward in the NBA too? Yeah. 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 Yeah, but like we would match up in practice and shit like that. You yeah. get switched on to him, yep. whatever the situation is. And one on one, you're taking him, saying a prayer. No, yeah. fuck no, nah, no. Nicole, yo, he's no. a he's a dog. He's who's, a dog. Who's yeah. the hottest take of who you think you could take that people might disagree with you with? One on one, right now. Yeah, drop a name. Nobody, because my <laughs> knee is fucked right now. <laughs> I've had like five knee all surgeries. Right, all right, now, now, really. I, yeah, yeah I, I've had two major ones and two minors. Uh, I had one major, so I blew out my knee my rookie year. Oh, no yeah, shit. I, um, and I was playing really well. So, like, when you're a first-rounder, basically, you're going back and forth between the G League. If you're on a roster that's good, we were a playoff contending team, So, and we had three power forwards in front of me. There's no fucking way I'm seeing the floor. So they would bounce me back and forth from the G League, Yep. go down for a little stint in the G League. I'm killing it. And then uh, brought me back up for, like, a couple weeks, sent me back down, and when I went back down, boom, felt the pop in the first – 30 seconds of a game and straighten my knee out. You think so. you would have played longer if it wasn't for that? Um, I don't know. I don't really know that that really played too much of a part because that year was going to be a development year for me anyways. Mm -hmm. And I thought I did a great job in my rehab and I came back faster, stronger, more athletic than I was before. Mm. Um, and I felt like that was the best basketball player I ever was at that point wow, going okay. into my second year. So. To me, in my eyes, I don't really think it set me back too far. If anything, the only thing it might have hurt is just the experience of the on-court playing time. Like, at that level, you have to play with the guys because of how fast-paced the game is and, you know, how quick the reads are and shit like that. Yeah. So when you lose that time, maybe that affected me a little bit, but mm -hmm. not So it was time. like a catalyst, if anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so then if it wasn't the knee, let's talk about, you know, you said it was the bad business. Take us back to that. Yeah, so... Um, Going into my second year in the contract, I think it's in October, or middle of October, um, basically right after all the preseason games, the team then has to sign you back for your third year team option. So they're the ones that decide, all right, do we want to keep Tyler or not? And going into that point, coming off my knee surgery, all this shit, I thought I played some of the best basketball I ever have. I heard rumors from teammates that were talking to front office guys saying that I was potentially going to start or be the sixth man on the team. Like shit that I never thought was going to be a reality thing for me, you know? Yep. Um, and then other players on the team being like, yo, coach just told us that you were the best guy in the summer the entire time. And you're talking guys that are who they are now. Mm. And um, 
So I'm at like my highest point. I get into training camp. And prior to that, I was always playing with like the first and second unit guys and scrimmages and shit like that. And get into training camp. And it was like, dude, somebody fucking flipped the switch. And the coaches, front office, nobody would look at me. Nothing. Yeah, it was it was really fucking weird. So I'm in training Over camp and like what? they just were it's trying somebody to like, in their ear, do you think? Like, no, I don't I, think it's anybody in their ear. It's just they're making a decision at that point. They just drafted Michael Porter Jr. Mm-hmm. and they just drafted a kid, Jared Vanderbilt, who's another power forward. Both fucking great players, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, both. So now you have those two that they just drafted, and then they had me and three other power forwards. So there's fucking six of us at wow. the time. And it's like somebody's gotta go. Mm. For whatever reason, I was that guy and I just the the way that it all happened um was really rough and I was there was opportunities for them to trade me to teams that told my agent I was going to play and they were going to guarantee me that year on the contract so there was like six teams in the the west and like four in the east all of them were trying to trade for me and telling my agent we're going to pay him and he's going to play for us right away so you're thinking all right I'm going to go someplace now and they're like nope owner told um the front office they can't trade me to anybody in the west so those six teams gone, done. What? Then the four teams in the East, their answer why they didn't trade me was because they weren't getting um, basically the, a player of my caliber in return. So from a business standpoint, you're not paying me, right? So like my contract's done after this year. Mm-hmm. Yep. That clearly means I'm not going to play this year for you. Right. So I'm basically worthless. Like I'm just going to sit on the end of your bench now and essentially like rot basically. Yeah. Right. Um, and so I called our president at the time or vice president and I demanded a trade and he was like, oh, we'll try, we'll do what we can and never fucking happen. So don't you become a free agent what? though after? So I was that? a free agent yeah. after that. And then you can go anywhere. I can go anywhere. I can sign with anybody. Yeah. And nothing happened? I ended up signing with the Kings, but it was a non-guaranteed deal. Okay. And at that point, I honestly, like I was telling guys in the locker room, they were like, oh, where, like, what are you thinking of doing next year? And I was like, dude, I, I hope I'm fucking done. Wow. Yeah. I was like, I don't It turned you off fun. that much? Oh, yeah. Just because of the business you're saying. Yeah. Because that sure. side. Yeah. Which is wow. looking back, I mean, probably a little immature in that sense, like being a young guy and trying to figure it all out. I should have stuck through it for sure. And I think like I still would probably be playing if I just was like, hey, put your head down and grind a little bit and fucking get over it. Um, but instead I just uh just kind of like shut down. So, and was like, so there's a this. piece missing here. Hmm. If if you were so confident to walk away unless it was just an immature decision there had to be something else to go to that was better there wasn't even a job an opportunity you were just like fuck this yeah wow yeah it's just crazy really you regret that or no um no 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 because my life would not uh it wouldn't be what it is now if everything happens for a reason yeah you know like i got a fucking awesome house i'm close by to my family we just had a son you know, congratulations. congratulations. Yeah, yeah. How so old? He's uh seven and a half months now. Wow. Yeah. Oh, you're in it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm in My it. daughter's I'm 11 it. months now. Look at that. Dad, Look at us. Yeah, yeah. Son, yeah. Dad gang right there. Shit, I might have um, to do a little breeding, get some height. We'll have a, we'll a capoletti that's actually a true six foot. Yo. That's hilarious. <laughs> that is hilarious. <laughs> that's crazy, though. So you were turned off so much by yeah. how that was. And you're 22 or 23 at the time you leave? So now um, I would have been 23. Mm. Yep. And then honestly, I don't know that it necessarily played a big role, but I got waived by the king. So I come back home and I move all my shit from California, drive it back here. Mm. Um, And it's kind of like this in-between period where there are some teams still calling my agent. And then Mm. there's overseas teams, which is a great option, obviously, to go make money and play against great competition, obviously. Yep. Um, And then COVID happened. And like the world's shutting down and I'm like, well, fuck, thank God I didn't do that, you know, because at that time it was Stuck like in Europe everyone's or something. dying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I was like, all right, I'm just going to chill out and ride this out now. And then OMC happened. If there was a team you could have played for, what was your favorite the team? Bucks. Really? Just because wow. I loved small town vibe, like uh, Milwaukee, I mean, super Milwaukee's, small town, yeah. super small town or city, I should say. Um and I loved, like, the coaching staff was fucking dope. Front office was awesome. And I just, I don't know what it was, but the second I stepped in there for, like, my pre-draft process and the workouts and stuff, I killed it. So I don't know if I just had a really good, like, vibe and just, Now, do you reach know. out to them after you become a free dra- free agent? I mean, no. my agent was talking to guys and shit. Trying to? Yeah, yeah, they, they were trying to. But, um, you know, it's got to be right situation. And yep. at that point, too, like, 
I essentially rode the bench basically my second year in the NBA. I mean, I played a little bit here and there. Um, okay. Did some time in the G League, but there's really not like true game film of me. Yeah. You know, like against NBA level competition. So, mm -hmm. and then when I was with the Kings, I was there for really it was like three and a half months. And then I found out that I had a torn labrum in my hip. Um, and there were some other reasons why I guess they waived me. But so I had no film from that year either. So teams that were going to try to sign me, they're just taking a chance on a guy yeah, you know, now at this see. point. All right, let's go to the positive side of things. What was your best moment in the NBA? What was your favorite moment? Um, I don't really have like, I guess everyone would probably say like just stepping on the court for the first yeah. time, scoring their first point, something like that. But yeah. um, to me, it was more like the relationships I built. You know, right. I'm not like crazy close with a lot of those guys, but I have a couple that I'm still like, I could call them up or FaceTime them right now. They would answer and like, you know, those relationships to me go a really long way. Good answer. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like so that, that. That's that's mine. You get any of them to come to your camps and stuff? That'd be wild. We were gonna have Isaiah Thomas um, come to a camp. No shit. Yeah, he was gonna come. You down can play to him. He's your size. Yeah, yeah. No, I still yeah. <laughs> he would fuck you up. Yeah. <laughs> nah, he's sick. <laughs> yeah. I have one he's fucking sick. leg. No. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't even I show forgot. up. I I'm forgot. Like, oh yeah, send me the film. <laughs> <laughs> he um he was gonna come down to NEMA, New York Military Academy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we were gonna run a camp, and then um. The week before we had my camp that we do in Pine Plains and a coaching staff member got COVID and was around all of us. And at that time he was still trying to like get back in the league and he yeah. was like rumored to have workouts. So as his boy, I was like, yo, bro, like, I don't know if this is smart. Like, God forbid we fucking come tomorrow. Right. And like try to run this. I get COVID. You get COVID. Now you can't work out for teams. There's no way, you know, so. That he's about to go. Right. Isn't he about to get signed to a ten-day contract? I think I just saw. Yeah, with the Suns, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's about yeah. to go back into the yeah. league. He's about yeah, to go back crazy. into the league. He can still hoop too. Yeah, he's so nice. Do you know who that is? Nope. How tall is he? Five nine. Five eight. Shortest guy. Yeah, he's the... five eight. Yeah. yeah you was five second eight. in running <laughs> in the MVP like his best year. I mean, yeah. he's a dog. Yeah. Yeah. That's Did you ever play with him? Did you end up playing with him at all? Yeah, when I was with the Nuggets. Okay. Yeah, so we were teammates for my second year with the Nuggets. Best teammate I probably ever had. Got it. And he's fucking awesome. Interesting. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. I yeah. was going to ask about leaving money on the table. Do you have any regrets about that? Because to me, I think about yeah. it as a, like a business decision that that maybe was made poorly. And I think that For you sure. kind of feel that way too. 100%. Yeah. I mean, so. at the end of the day, I was in a business where I could have changed like generational wealth in my family. Right. So but they were hoeing you. Bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was not fun to deal with at that time. Um, but there's definitely nights where like I look back or I'll stay up because I can't fucking sleep thinking about it. Where I'm like, I was the one in my family to have the chance, like nobody else. And then I'm thinking like, oh, what would my brothers have done? Like they would have stuck it out, or what mm. would my parents? So that's the part that when I really start to like break it down and think about it, and it fucking like that kills me. Yeah. I just think that like you you might have those thoughts, but everything happens for a reason yeah, for bro sure. no and yeah. now you got this going yeah. and what if you did stay out there and you'd had this terrible experience yeah. continuing to be thrown around yeah like a you know yeah like a number yeah i so, mean high science 2020 right like, yeah fuck it is what it is can't go back so shit is good now time yeah. to go hunting that's it yeah exactly, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yo, guys, we're uh, live on Tudor's Three Legs set with Zach and Tony. We got Tyler Lydon in the house. We're getting ready for the event on March 30th at the Academy. It's a live podcast event. We're going to hear his story and everything. Right, guys? How's it going tonight, today on set, guys? Uh, it was pretty good until you interrupted us. We're in the middle of this podcast, bro. What's going on here? <laughs> Tony, just show wait. me that flyer. Show just me that. wait, and we're going to see you guys live at the Academy on the 30th. What's up? As an amputee, people always come up to me. They ask me the fucking weirdest question. So you're tall. You were just telling me people always comment and they're like, oh, what's the weather like up there? Do people ever ask you if you know other tall people? No. Really? That's a good question. No. Yeah. Do you no. know Kyle Neville? No. no. <laughs> that was, there he is. That's my boy. He's local. Tall as shit. Shouts out to my boy. Like he's. Um, yo, I swear all the time people walk up to me. They're like, oh my God, you're an amputee. Yeah. They're like, do you know Billy Babooby? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, no. we just hang out. All of no, us does he have together. one leg? And yeah. they're like, oh yeah. I'm like, oh yeah. We were, I saw him at the meeting. <laughs> like <laughs> the one what leg do you think we do? <laughs> Like there's like no it's a fucking AA yo, meeting. Seriously, guys. like yo, yo that's so funny. We swap shoes and shit. Yeah. Like, what do you think goes on? <laughs> we buy pairs. Yeah. Not a fun amputee with the other foot, so yeah. you could swap shoes. Swap all the time. shoes and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. You asked me that dumbass question. <laughs> yeah. Like, do you have to buy different size shoes? 
No, they make the foot yeah, match. Yeah, whatever, bro. I don't <laughs> crazy. Know. We learned uh, so much about amputeeism early on in this. Yeah, it was crazy. Tism. Yeah, you're the fucking tism. Um, the tism. <laughs> the tism. <laughs> Yo, it's Tony. Tell them about your uh, and one. The and one. Oh yeah, I was Wait, wearing what? the and one sock, oh. and I was like, oh yeah, that's how I can't my, count my feet. And <laughs> one. <laughs> and one. Yeah, that was crazy a, though. Yeah, bro. You that's got like, and one sock. Yeah, bro. They sell them at Walmart. That's crazy. What are you talking about? Uh, Next he to the culture. Shacks. He's way out the culture, bro. You don't know <laughs> what he's crazy. doing. The and you don't one know what he's socks. Doing. Wait, does that sound like it's like a dope brand? It's Walmart. N one's just yeah. like a comedy brand. It's yeah. like oh oh okay. Like you get I roasted in high school. Oh yeah, I was definitely you get roasted. I'm surprised I wasn't getting roasted. I guess <laughs> I, I will when this hits. Yeah, I'm with Tyler Light and talk about and one socks. <laughs> <laughs> You ever met Shaq? Another tall guy? No. No? No. no that's I've unfortunate. Yeah, yeah. That's the guy that yeah. I'd like to meet. No, yeah. He would be a good one. Yeah. That's Shaq a good, be big good and one. scary. Yeah. Shaq could talk like this. <laughs> Shaq owned a lot of business. <laughs> Make a lot of money. Yo, you ever hear Shaq talk, bro? Yo, yeah, that's, that's it, though. No, Charles yeah. Barkley cracks yeah. on him and says shit just yeah. like that. He speaks in the third person. Shaq right. don't Yo, like yeah. when you talk like Shaq that. Shaq is yeah. low-key genius, yeah. and he's pro- yeah. I think he's worth like $300 million or something. Yeah, he's got his hand it. in everything. A lot of money. Bro, he's, he's on the general it. Yeah. Uh, the car insurance yeah. commercials. Yeah. He's killing the game. It's easy to get your way in any business. Speaking of which, you're about uh, to open up a solar office in Syracuse. You want to sell solar in Syracuse? Yeah. Yeah, what? I'm down. Cool. Yeah. We can knock on doors. We can use him for sight. I got yeah. some he good just, connections up yeah, there. Yeah, you probably do, actually. He can hold that, the That's sunlight. crazy. I just put that together. We literally had a meeting yesterday about opening up an office in Syracuse. My the, the best thing is when you go to the bar and someone's like, yo, how fucking tall are you? I say, guess my height. If you're right, I'll buy you a beer. If you're wrong, you buy me one. Mm, and then, and then, then you just lie. You tell them the wrong one. No, they I'll just fucking pull out my... I'll be, I'm an honest man. Uh, okay, I'll buy okay. him a fucking beer. <laughs> but they're always like, you're 7'3". No, dipshit. That's, I'm 6'9". Yeah. Buy me a beer. And they'll buy you fucking beer. So I get mm. free beer all the time. It's so like, you're in the NBA. Were you single at that time? You're married now? No, nah, I was with my girl. You were with your girl. Yep. Damn. I was gonna ask questions about, about you know, that. groupies, yeah. bro. No. Did you did you still get approached by groupies? For sure. Like yeah. Tyler. Yeah, yeah. All right, tell us the worst Swipe story. Delete. Let's go. That's no. it. Yeah. Good man. All virtual. Yeah. I mean, you'd get the occasionally you go out. Little floozy. Video. She's like, oh, I saw you yeah. playing on the yeah. court. What are you no. doing later? Yeah, no. And you're like, of that. Whoop, get of out that. of here, yeah. hoe. I was. Uh, I'm pretty laid back, as we've kind of talked about. So I'm. I was off all that. When you go out with the with the boys on the team is it even crazier like yeah. non-stop yes you can't go anywhere yeah it's yeah. fucking insane Damn, um, i want to i was just actually at a Takato in fort lauderdale and joe burrow walked in yeah so it's, and everyone was like yeah. trying to get up take pictures he was sitting everyone down but yeah i think i went to the club like maybe twice i mean i'm not a big club guy as you can imagine yeah um and it's the most wild scene ever in what town? Where were you? Miami was oh, one. Yeah. Tell um, us, tell us, tell us. So this is when you're traveling for games. Yeah, yeah. We were playing the Heat, or we played the Heat. We just played them, and it was that night. We were yeah, the coaches. Every the coaches all understand too. Like guys want to party. It's like and be fucking celebrities yeah, you have a little to. bit. So if you have that, if you have like a two day break, which is pretty rare, like where you're in Miami and you got to go play in fucking Indiana the next day, right? Or you know, if there's that two-day break, they'll sometimes let you stay. So we were in Miami. They're like, all right, we won the game. Guys did well. Like, we're just going to delay the flight till tomorrow morning. Mm. So guys all went out, asked me to go out, went out with them, and it's fucking wild. Everybody's <laughs> just blowing money and uh, girls What's everywhere. What's that like? It's, Take us there. You're just, it doesn't um, matter what you're doing. You're throwing are it Are you around. just chilling, though? Like, you're just, no, yeah, I, you're not I, getting down at all? No, all the, all the vets are like, you don't you don't worry about anything because they're all on fucking 30 40 million dollar contracts yeah. they're like we got everything but when you hear they're you know they're spending twenty thousand dollars on a table and you show up and we got four or five tables and then the bottle service is endless it's crazy yeah and then i mean the guys all the guys on the nuggets when i that's when we went out um they're fucking awesome like down to earth guys so it's not like anybody on that team wasn't doing anything crazy it's just the attention that's on you is crazy you know like you walk in and the fucking mcs on the mic like all right, the Denver Nuggets are in here, like, and everyone's fucking going nuts and confetti flying. It's like, what the fuck. That's so dope. Bro. Any rappers ever pop in where you were at? Um, no, no. Got it. No. What? So the drinking is it's happening. Like guys are drinking because they just they they can do that. They're just physically able to. Like, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. Like that's once in a blue moon. 
Got kind it. of a situation. Got yeah, it. it doesn't happen very often. Um, and when it does happen, it's like the right plans are in place. So you're recovering still the next day and like making sure you're taking care of your body because you got to, you know. So do, do you feel like in a sense you like skipped out on like parties and vacations uh, or like earlier on in high school and college in order to like pursue your dream? Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. I never really partied in high school at all. I mean, I did two years at a boarding school, so it's like impossible to party there, obviously. And if you did, you got kicked out if they found out. So it's like, mm. can't take that risk. And then uh, and then I didn't do much at Syracuse at all. So yeah, I mean, I was pretty dialed in, but that's also kind of part of it. You know, that's what it takes. What's Tyler Lydon's favorite hobbies? Favorite hobbies, hunting, mm. fishing, uh, being with the family, shooting guns. I don't know. All you that. bow hunt or yeah. just yeah, yeah. rifle? Yeah. Where do you shoot? Where? At my house. You got your pistol permit? Yeah. Lit. You yeah, got to shoot. Of Wait, yeah. like right at the crib? Yeah, yeah. We can shoot at my house. But my he uncle, lives in fucking middle of nowhere. Yeah, my uncle, well, I guess he's technically not my uncle. We just call him uncle. One of those situations. Yeah, He's yeah. got a farm, so we go shoot there a lot. Um, we shoot at my parents' house, yeah. That's the best, bro. Yeah, it's fucking awesome. It's expensive, though. It's, <laughs> yeah, shout out Biden. Very expensive. <laughs> shout out Sleepy Joe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Damn. very expensive, though. Yeah. So a lot of the day to day now is doing doing a lot of the hobbies. I know you're obviously focused on the business, which I don't want to get into right now. But yeah. um, it's hanging out with the family. You're not doing nothing crazy. You you built built your own house, right? Didn't you? Yeah, didn't my you dad runs. A, yeah. He runs a construction. Yeah, business. yeah. So you built a beautiful house yep. out in the woods. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Yeah, got it. So you're living the life out yeah, there. Yeah, chilling. So I don't know if you've seen it. That's like our question we always do: is that who would you go into business with? Who would you bankrupt? And who would you take a bubble bath with? Bubble bath. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. Could you imagine the size of the bubble bath? <laughs> I have to the size of the studio. I would drown in that bitch. <laughs> be a pool. So, yeah, yeah it's, a pool. it's a pool at that point with some soap. All right, who would you go into business with? Who would you? I mean, we does that really make that sense? Bubble bath in, yeah, it doesn't make sense in basketball terms. Didn't we ask it a different who way? Who cares? Let's see if he's got an answer. If not, don't answer it. Didn't we answer a different way though when we asked Justin? Right, business bubble right. bath and bench. Well, no, start cut. I mean, bench start cut. The bubble bath part. <laughs> oh, shit. I meant to cut that one out. Start Yo, bubble bath, bubble bath, yeah. and bubble bath. It's start bench cut. Got it. All right. Start so we'll, bench. Yeah, there you go. We'll, we'll try that again. So start bench cut, Kobe, LeBron, MJ. Start MJ, bench Bron, cut Kobe. Wow. Yeah, which is tough. Yeah, yeah I was, mean, there's. I don't really honestly even have a reason for why I'm cutting him it's just lebron and him are interchangeable at that point so you're starting mj and if you're not you're fucking uh, original so build me your all-time starting five all-time starting five steph at the one mm -hmm. mj at the two ron at the three katie at the four shack at the five shack at the five <laughs> katie at the four katie at the four or bron i mean whichever one you want they're yeah. interchangeable there okay shack's the most dominant of all time so he's on I the agree. roster no matter what i agree MJ's the GOAT. Here's Bryce's LeBron's question. LeBron's second. Uh, the original Space Steph Jam or the new one? <laughs> Fun fact, never seen either. Wow. Really? I've never seen the original. Yeah. Oh, bro, All Space right, Jam's man. one of my Listen, favorite fucking movies ever. The new Space Jam, garbage. I've never seen it. But if you haven't seen the old Space Jam, you're crazy. Why? Yeah, no, never. Why? What's wrong with you? I don't you? know. Maybe, no, it, like, maybe, oh. <laughs> maybe my mom had it playing in the background or something, but I've... Like, Are you a movie guy? Big movie guy. Yeah, you're... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, bro, but I also do basketball all day, every day. Yeah, but so that's like, like a... I know. Yeah, it's a staple. That's a classic, it's a, it's a staple. bro. It's a staple. Yeah, no, I don't know. I just never have. All right, give me your best mo favorite movie then. My favorite? Top five. Give me one of the top five. Give me a couple of you, you, your, your oh, favorite movies. The question I is top three that. basketball movies. But... Well, he don't even watch any basketball movies. Blue Chips is my, my favorite basketball movie. Okay. Uh, have you seen that one? Nope. Very solid. It's, nope. it's a good one. Uh, my favorite movie of all time. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Titanic. I know it. <laughs> Big Titanic guy. <laughs> he would have been the notebook, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that more than I wish to. Uh, oh, boy. All right. Well, before we cut me out of the conversation completely. <laughs> uh, Yo. Spalding or, or The Rock? <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> yeah. No, I want to talk about. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's a good question. Smart money. Moves. Are you a rock guy? Rock guy. Hell yeah. You gotta be. All right, we got the be. answer. <laughs> gotta be. The rock. You gotta be. A couple of my friends are the rock guy, but the rock gotta that be. you buy in Poughkeepsie, <laughs> not the one you shoot with. Yeah, yeah. I guess you could shoot it if you melt it down. <laughs> Yo, bro. What? <laughs> Holy shit. What? Clip Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's a good clip, clip right there. Clip. That's what? a good clip. Put it on Reddit. Yeah. Anyway, um, smart money moves you made to 
because you said in the earlier interview that your financial advisor admitted mm. that you were really good with your spending. Yeah. So let's talk about some smart money moves you made. Um, the biggest thing is just the smartest thing I've done is honestly getting him and he just handles all of the investing side and stocks and bonds and all that bullshit. I haven't really ever been out and like invested in an actual business. I mean, mm -hmm. I have recently. Once, well, you have a portfolio. Yeah. One's more recent that I technically can't talk about um, mm. quite yet. But yeah, that's what's the biggest purchase you've ever made. Built his house. Yeah. So probably the house anything that I crazy? in Denver, but that was it. No, no. You didn't buy anything I bought crazy? my house and a truck and wait, you it. bought the house. Did you, what year did you buy it? That would have been 2017. And then you sold it after COVID dirt. Yeah. Kind of like during. So you made out on that. I did well. Yeah. yeah. And I, I put a little into the house too. I didn't like go buy a nice house. Actually. I bought one that was big in a nice area and I put like a good chunk of change into it, fixed mm -hmm. it up a little and. Got your money back out of it for sure. Yeah, made nice. some on it too. Yeah, nice. yeah. I looked at that as an investment. Yeah, you did yeah. good on that one. They were Thanks trying to COVID. The, I got drafted in the the lady um, who helps out with like all the players in the transition process, getting you an apartment, a house, whatever. She's a, she's awesome. Her name's Amy O'Brien. Um, fucking great lady. But she was telling me she's like, yeah, it's gonna be like 10k for an apartment or a house to rent like every month. And in my eyes at that time, like I didn't never had a payment like that. Mm -hmm. 10k a month. Yeah, so I was like, fuck that. I'm not doing that. What? Yeah. I, I thought you said she was a great lady. That's a <laughs> fucking terrible pricing. What? Which is insane, but that shows where most of the guys' mindset is with their money. Yeah, that, like no Most of them are like, no, I want a better one than that. Like, I know guys on rookie contracts, and the problem in the league is, like, all the rookies try to compete with all the vets. vets. So they'll pull up in a Lambo or something, and the rookies are like, all right, I now got this contract. Let me go buy a Bentley. And then it's like, oh, no. Downhill. You mm. see a lot of, did you witness people just completely fuck it up with the money? Um, yeah, I've kind of seen like some guys downfalls a little bit. It's not like they went to the point they were completely bankrupt, but like there were some guys that were spending insane amounts of money. I feel like basketball is the sport where most people blow their money, For right? Sure. Most bankrupt yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's like a fact too. Yeah, yeah. I think so too. I had a teammate that went to, um, I think it was Louis Vuitton store, and he rented out like a Mercedes van, and he filled the entire thing, just at one store. That just yeah. gave me like an ick. Yeah. I yeah. hate spending money on sh like useless shit. Yeah, And exactly. Louis Vuitton bags are at the top of the list. Yeah, yeah. Your least favorite thing about being tall? Um, can't find clothes to fit you the right way. I actually have the same problem down here, buddy. Yeah, yeah. So... And I'm like, I guess I'm very uh, slim. So, like, if I get a double XL, it's going to be huge on me. Wait, let's talk about what, what size are the shoes? 14s. <laughs> what, uh, what is your waist size? Waist size, I'm like a 34 to 36. And what's the length of the pants? 38 to 40. Bro, my bed sheets are like a 38 <laughs> to 40. What the fuck? Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. That was the one nice perk of playing was, like, everything that we got. Like, a lot of times you could get things custom tailored yeah. tailor, like super easily because mm -hmm. everybody wants your business obviously and they'll yeah. like sponsor you and give you shit so yeah that was like the one nice thing okay so close what's your most favorite thing about being tall most favorite thing about being tall is it makes basketball a little easier yeah <laughs> yeah you know i always said if i was sixth i would have went to the league but yeah you were a dog too <laughs> in high school you were a dog i was uh, i was all right i was okay enough to you know, for a white boy. You know what they say? You know what I mean? <laughs> I got the job done. Got the job done. I got the job done. Um, all right, I'm trying to think of some other cool clip questions to ask. Bryce, you got anything? Yeah, so did you say that you had to play defense for LeBron? Uh, no, I was like, he was an example. I wouldn't, I don't really know, honestly. Um, probably the best player I guard was Clay Thompson. Mm, got it. You kind of look like Clay Thompson. A little bit. Thought about Maybe. it. Yeah, yeah so a little bit. In the, the vein, beer, in, few beers in. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so in the vein of that, right, like, can you just, like, kind of, like, tr maybe help us, like, visualize for the viewer, like, stepping onto the court in the NBA? Like, take us through it. Like, you seem like you're just, like, a solid, like, you know, you don't really get, like, affected by that. And But we talked a little bit about pressure. Like, take us to that moment. Like, is it breathtaking? Um, the first time, yeah, for sure, because there's so much that goes into it. And in, like the NBA, it's entertainment, obviously. So like the theatrics around it, the arena, the environment, all that stuff, that's like it's very stimulating. So even as a player, there's a gazillion things going on on the floor. 
Um, Do you remember that exact moment? Like, yeah, we were. Well, it was the first time I stepped on the floor was preseason game at Golden State, and um, mm. I think they just came off a championship that year too. So, like, even a preseason game sold out, fans going fucking nuts. It was like, what is life right now? Fireworks in the fucking arena and shit, mm. you know. Um, so yeah, it was pretty fucking wild. But at the same, are time, you, you super also, nervous like, at I the gotta, time though, or no? Um, at first, yeah. Like yeah. you're shaking a little bit on the shot. It's coming off a little bad. A little bit. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Bro, because I'm sure. thinking about, we played, we played the, the state semi championship yep. at, uh, Westchester County, yep. whatever it was. Yeah. And I was a sophomore at the time and we were, we went 19 and 0. We were playing Clarkstown South and we went on the field that we went on the court for warm up, bro. I couldn't even shoot the ball. I was terrified. Yeah, it's crazy. I was te- I, we only played in front of I don't know, maybe it was 20,000 people. I was yeah. terrified. The most interesting thing though is like for me, Syracuse, we had more fans at every game than any NBA stadium. Uh, so like at that point I was used to playing in front of a lot of people. It's just um I guess just everything else about it like the fact yeah, the that you're in the fucking league. Yeah. And like you're not guarding a guy I don't you're Guarding Clay Thompson. Yeah, like, like everyone knows who they are. Yeah, that's the name. I'm on national TV right now. Like yeah. you could be in college and not yeah. all the games are on national TV. <laughs> yeah. But like your first clip, you get fucking like I got backdoor cut and he dunked. I'm like fuck. Oh uh, yeah, you're <laughs> you're going on ESPN. Nice one, Tyler. <laughs> so what, what am I thinking about? Oh, didn't you um, didn't you lose your shoe in At one Syracuse, game? Yeah. Yeah, 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 that was a that was crazy. Elite eight um, against Virginia. They were the one seed. We were the ten. And uh, yeah, first half of the game, my shoe popped off. I went to go set a screen, popped off, and my teammate grabbed it off the floor, threw it out of bounds. And, and then you banged the three, right? Yeah, yeah. There was I saw the shot clock was winding down, so I called it. I shot fake, little side dribble, boom. I remember that. Oh. Yeah, I remember that. He lost his shoe. Yeah, I think like still goes viral. Like if I post oh, it yeah. on Instagram, it still does. Like, Should have been an and one sock commercial. Mm. See? I, yo, would, I, I have had that I've video. Had you could have like, shot it. Want to buy the sock off? Me. <laughs> hey, yo, that's wild. <laughs> you still God. have it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You have the sock. The sock. You, you saved it with it? you. It's for sale. If he um, put, what's the number? It? What's is it your left foot or your right foot? Right foot. What's your? That's good for you. You don't yeah, need a sock for your left out. foot. It'll be Look perfect. I'll put it on the other foot. It would just probably like go up past your knee. Yes. It's stocking. Supposed to be an ankle sock to your fucking kneecap. Exactly. So do you feel like um, the business dealings that you had, and my apologies for not looking at you while I'm talking to you, um, like the business dealings, do you think that set you up for a a more well-rounded understanding of what entrepreneurship would be like for you when you started? Like, did you, you said it was sort of like a happy accident, LMC. Yeah. Um, Did you, did, did the athleticism and the business dealings lead you to be a strong entrepreneur? Yeah, I think so. I think, um, and uh, like the NBA, kudos to them. They do a really good job giving you like, you have to go to all these seminars as rookies. So you learn about the financial side, like the ins and outs. So good. Right away when I'm drafted and you go to like, they call it little rookie weekend, um, all the rookies in the NBA go and even some second year guys go, it's mandatory. You have to go. It's like you're locked in this fucking hotel. Basically, you're not allowed to leave. Um, they just give you the ins and outs of everything you expect in the NBA, um, everything that goes with it. And the biggest thing is the financial side. So at that point, I felt like I had a really good understanding, um, especially prior to like going into it. I didn't know much about money at all. I was just a college kid. So, um, yeah, it definitely it definitely helped me up. It gave me it gave me a better understanding, like what to expect going into business as LMC Athletics and all the other stuff that um, I try to do. Mm-hmm. Do you think NBA players are underpaid, overpaid? What's your take? Um, they're probably paid the right way. Paid I just think right. It, yeah, I think it's right in between. I think the NBA is the best um, sport at paying their players. And like the the PA, the Players Association, did a really good job um, negotiating their last deal with the NBA. So like, for example, as a first round pick, I still get like licensing checks from the NBA. So like the whole goal for them. Still was, to this day? Yeah, like I just got one the other day. It's dope. Yeah. It's it's not like I'm sure some of these guys are making Oh yeah insane yeah. amounts, but like they always were trying to look out for the younger guys and any NBA player it was like a brother they really look at it as like a brotherhood. So they killed it on that. Um That's dope. Yeah, Dude. and then and I think too, like the NBA makes a shit ton of fucking money. Yeah. So like the guys that are out there performing should get paid that. Well when you say they're the best taken care of they don't make the most overall but you're saying like the lower level guys make more money than like a lower level in mlb or something because mlb and nfl contracts got to be bigger no 
Yeah, no, they're definitely bigger yeah, for yeah. sure. Their rookie deals are like like Joe Burrow's rookie deal. Like what is shit, Fucking right? Fifty million, thirty million guaranteed or something like it's an oh, NBA it player, way less. An NBA player, like you're slotted. Like you could look up right now, like this year's this coming draft. Mm-hmm what the first rounders are going to make you can find all of it it says yeah. if you're the one pick you get 12 million if yep. you're the 30 you know um but more so like they did a really good job setting up guys for after basketball Got like it. once their career was done there's a lot of plans that were in place for them to mm. still continue to get the benefits of being an nba player got it that's, that's right. smart the number that's one pick this year and i guess it's for this year that already passed uh bryce young that's football i yeah, think that's football oh shit sorry guys <laughs> That's uh, the quarterback for Alabama. Now, Alabama. Yeah. I remember we were having a conversation about this. I think it was at the vault. Like Ten million. Two years ago. Um, college players getting paid. Yeah. Do college players <laughs> get paid now? Yeah. Well, yeah. were you getting paid? No. No. So you just higher. said no, that. Just, <laughs> I wish. You I just wish I was lying. I would you, tell you if I was lying. <laughs> you had more fans show out to a Syracuse game than yep. some NBA games. Now, don't you think that some of the players like in that day you were bringing traffic bro yeah so the year we went to the final four came out with someone came out with an article that everybody on the roster so even like the guys that walk on the team that don't have a scholarship like just practice players everybody um one through i think 18 at that time there's 18 guys on the roster would have got paid like 1.5 mil yeah, off of our run to just that year to the final four. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it's fucking insane. Like don't you think that maybe uh if you guys are bringing in that much traffic you might yeah. Deserve a check? It would uh it would have been nice for well, sure. Well that was now a talk don't you think uh while. if now on the on the devil's advocate side of that, how many young kids would that destroy if you oh my if, god uh, yeah. that's college the issue. players were getting checks like that. Yeah. Maybe they could have something like a players association that takes that money and invests it for again. You, you yeah. can't touch it till you're twenty four or something. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I mean, you look at it now like what it's doing, it's ruining college Kids, athletics yeah. like look at nick saban left and he just was in that interview the other day and he's like i stopped because every kid fucking wants to know how much money they're going to make for me next year it's like this is college sports you know yeah, yeah. That's so i'm issue. like on both sides because going through it i was like i need to get i should be getting paid there's no way yeah. i don't deserve yeah. like a chunk of this right? right even if it was from like jersey sales something right you know? um but I also see that side where it's completely ruining college sports. Yeah. Mm. You know, it's but it's like, a hard balance. It's like yeah. if, you're, if you're bringing in the traffic, yeah, you should, they should like give sure. the money Definitely to the team, and the team should yeah. be divvied up and have expenses and stuff. I don't know. Yeah. That's weird because you're right. Like you're making ten mil in or one mil even, yeah. even at five hundred thousand in college. Yeah, like right. that's it's ridiculous. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, I think there's a much better solution to what's going on, and so they should have been doing something for a long time, for sure. Mm-hmm. I was just watching the Shannon Sharp and uh, Johnny Manziel interview. Yeah, well, he was exposed. He would have been making like twenty million a Insane. year. Insane. Twenty million Insane. a year as a college athlete for bringing in as many views as he did. That's crazy. That is wild. Yeah, I could not imagine. <laughs> uh, so yeah, yeah that's crazy. So sometimes when you're on the court. Uh, actually, probably almost every time you're on the court, it can get pretty aggressive. Yeah. One NBA player you would punch in the face today. <laughs> Fuck. I don't know. <laughs> Come on. Um, it's going to be somebody who you're like, yeah, that fucking guy, He's. I still want to punch him. Probably Kyle Kuzma. You fucking watch out, Kyle. Really? Only reason. Maybe, no, I, it kind of makes sense, actually. He was He was with my agency. So we like went through the pre-draft process I talked about before together. Same exact position. Mm. He got drafted by the Lakers at 27. Uh. I was ahead of him at 24, Uh. but he went to a shitty Lakers team, so he got to play right away. I didn't. He's now a $100 million guy in the NBA. I'm not. So so I mean that with a lot of respect. It's not like I dislike him at all. Like, he's a great kid. Yeah, a lot of the sports, a lot of that stuff, man, is just luck. And, like, you just need an opportunity. Yeah. That's all it is. You just need one opportunity. You have to play long enough to be the – Yo, when we were at the Volt Conference, we were talking about Tom Brady. You remember Tom Brady's story Mm -hmm. where he – he played his first year in college, and then he and he was redshirted. And then his second year, he played a couple games, but then they put him back down. And then his third year, he thought he was going to start for sure. And then they drafted somebody yeah. from high school, and then he rode the bench again. And then his yeah. fourth year, it was like, all right, I'm a senior. I'm finally going to get to play. And they split times with the other guy. And he's yeah. like, yo, what the fuck? Yeah, it's insane. You know? And then he becomes Tom Brady. Yep. You know what I mean? I yep. have more respect for that man as an athlete than any other man yeah. in the world. Yeah. yeah. I don't think. I mean, his story is nuts. Like, 
I don't even think MJ holds a candle to his legacy, and, and I don't care yeah. what anybody thinks yeah. about that. Yeah. that. Who do you think is the bro? goat of all sports? All sports greatest to ever. Michael Phelps. Mm, yeah, Ooh, I guess that's, that's hard to be. True. Me and my buddy actually yeah. literally had this conversation last night. Damn, so that's that's all. Oh, yeah? that came take. so quick. Yeah, it was that like was quick. him, Gretzky. Yeah, like you could look at Wayne. I Gretzky. don't know too much about hockey to Neither really know, I, but when you look at his accolades, insane. Yeah. Insane. I forget this, like what, how many MVPs he won by the time he was like 23 or something, mm. or 22. It was like fucking already had three under his belt. Mm. I just think for Tom Brady to leave his team and then go win another Super Bowl, yeah, solo yeah. dolo is like. Did you ever watch the documentary Whoa. on it? The documentary yeah. on Tom Last, Brady? Uh, no. Man in the Arena? Or yeah. Man on Fire? No, Man in the Arena. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what it's called, yeah. Oh, sick documentary. Is that the one where he kisses his sons? Michael no? Phelps is definitely. So. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. That's a hot take, though. Yeah. I think you might have something there. Yeah, I never you're probably even right. considered him, but he's. Yeah. He, doesn't he have more? Greatest Olympian he still of all time. has more gold medals than anyone ever? Than anybody, yeah. yeah. Ever. He that's is. the best of the best, like being yeah. an Olympian, too. That's, yeah. You know, we got Ali Krieger. Speaking of which, Ali Krieger, two time gold medal Olympian, coming to the event. Yep. Yep. Were you it's familiar legit. with Ali before or no. not really? So, how do you guys feel about Olympic basketball versus NBA, though? What's your take on that? Well, I played for Team USA, too. So, wait, like, what? Yeah. That's crazy. For the U18 team. Yeah. So, when I was going into my senior year at um, New Hampton Prep, uh -huh. I made the okay. USA U18 team. Um, I think it's weird just because they play the FIBA rules. So I'm so used to fucking like normal oh, basketball right. rules. Yeah, we're going speaking we're, yeah, French yeah, to yeah, me this right is now. Chinese FIBA for sure. rules. Um, so I think it's interesting the way the game has to change and manipulate to the way they play in FIBA and overseas and stuff. Major when NBA is the what are the major differences for mm -hmm. people who know Ma what there's really not like a major difference. That's the thing. Like there's oh, small right. minor details on how you could get called for like a travel. I guess a major one that would be easy to relate to is like if somebody shoots it in FIBA. And the ball's rattling around the rim. You can go hit it out. Mm. Oh, the NBA, you can't. Obviously, it's goaltending. I so can't like, do that no matter. So where like we guys are. would be on the foul line, and it would hit the rim once, and you're just seven footers going up and batting it out of there. Oh wow! So it's just it's that's so interesting. Weird. Yeah, it's it's weird. And it's, that's what is FIBA? Europe basketball? Basically, yeah. I mean, pretty much everybody else outside of the NBA. The NBA follows yeah, FIBA. Like, that's some American ass shit, bro. Yeah. Always, literally, always. Yeah. Yeah. Like the Euro step, though, isn't that because traveling's different or in FIBA or not? Nah, no, they just the reason they call it Euro step is because of this guy Manu Ginobili. Manu Ginobili, yeah. my guy. From oh, okay. Euro. You ever seen Manu Ginobili? I have no clue what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I'm black. I blacked out thirty minutes. Manu ago. Manu Ginobili <laughs> looks like. Looks like he should be somebody's father and should be sitting at home watching yeah. basketball. Yeah. And he was nasty. Yeah. And he had his sexy Filthy. little little step. Oh, okay. That yeah. they named him because he was European as hell. Yeah. Yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. Swatting the bat is insane. Yeah. So, boy Manu. so when you were growing up, like, what was the like the first time? Because like you weren't tall when you were five years old, were you? Like, no, no. When was like your like maybe it was maybe it was with your family, maybe it was on the court with friends. Like, when did you like realize like oh like this is when did you start playing and when did you realize like yo this is like gonna be my dream? Well, you know his um, two brothers are like five six, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> They're all huge. Um, eighth grade. That's what that I was playing with, yeah, cause just because I was playing with a local team, um, AU team, travel team, and um, I just was, like, fucking everybody up around here, and I was like, all right, I need to, like, take this to the next level. Went to a bigger program and was still doing really well there. I was like, all right. And I, at that point, I just I loved basketball, so it was always something that I kind of wanted to do and play in the NBA. It was like a dream. Um, but that's when I was like, all right, it's time to maybe we take this a little bit more seriously. But where did the love for basketball come from? Just random? My mom. Your no, mom. My mom was a hooper. She was really good. Um, she had some Division One offers, but she ended up playing just at Dutchess Community College. Because back then, there was no, like, WNBA when she played. So wow. She, so she was like, all right, I'm going to – she was dating my dad at the time, I'm pretty sure. And uh, she was like, I'm just going to stay local. And I think they won a national championship there too. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. So it comes from from your mom being an athlete. Got it. Yeah. Now, did, so was, did she used to train with you like when yeah, you were like little? She, I mean, she wouldn't like put us through drills, but she was the one that like taught me how to shoot. And that's kind of what I'm known for, I guess, as a basketball player. Um, yeah. So she taught us a lot of what we know. And then it, a lot came from just getting my ass whipped by my older brother and one on one and stuff like that. Got it. Okay. So so there was that you did have that like ass whooping element. Oh yeah. Not just yeah. like because like I'm sure a mom co helping you learn is different than like, uh you know like a strict dad type type. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean it was she's super competitive so it was like okay kind of the same I guess but that my parents were awesome they were never like you gotta go to fucking practice like 
get your ass out there now like we just wanted the shit you know and i always had my older brother and he was better than me till a certain point and i always wanted to be better than him and we would just go play one-on-one -on -one all day and then my two younger brothers came along it turned into two on two and that's all we did it was fucking just hoop. that's, that's amazing yeah. that's dope that's yeah. like i can relate when i was younger my my brothers are all a little bigger than me yeah they're like fake six foot fake six and uh so they would whoop my ass all yeah. day i got four brothers Yep, I got three. And, and my older brothers whooped my ass all day long, so I was always fighting and wrestling with them. And then when I got into wrestling when I was younger, yeah. I was wrestling kids my size. Yeah. So I went 14 and all, pinned every fucking... It was like, yeah. this is... That's my competition. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. It was like wasn't even fair. I was making kids cry and shit, <laughs> but then I didn't end up taking it seriously, yeah. which kind of sucked. I wish I did. I would have yeah. been good. Yeah. Uh, what made you take it so serious at the end? Like, because you thought you could get the NBA? Or you just... Got no, I just serious. I, I think um like if my dad was off to the side right now, he would tell you like I'm a little fucked up in the head. Like I'm just crazy, like about just being a workaholic. Um I always felt like no matter how good somebody was, I could outwork them and that was just something mm. I relied on. Um and so I loved like I loved feeling like shit after a workout and like getting <laughs> my ass fucking kicked, you know, or like mm. getting in a fight on the court. Whatever it was, um, I was like addicted to it in a sense. So I was just in the gym nonstop, and I, it was always a dream to play, and it panned out. But yeah. we're we're workaholics over here too. It's like yeah, yeah, different, see, different, different but for sure, no, yeah. it's all the same. You're bro. supposed to though, bro. Yeah. Like, what yeah. what is normal? Like, what do you, what does that mean? You're supposed to not work all the time and yeah. not have a good life. Exactly, I don't understand. Yeah. I any don't know. any wild like workout routines or like habits that you practice like eat half an onion every morning or something crazy <laughs> like some fucking or waking up that thing. early yeah, yeah i mean when i was at prep school um me and my my coach at the time when i was getting recruited i still remember um it was like virginia or louisville somebody called him up and was like hey how often is he in the gym like what's his work ethic really like you know because everyone says they work out and my coach was like no he's the hardest worker i've ever had but at that point in high school i was in the gym about seven hours a day so I would get up with him, um, and basically I structured my whole class day around basketball. Get up, I would work out for an hour and a half before school with my coach. I'd go to my first class, I'd have an hour break, I'd go right to the gym, shoot for an hour, you know, and I could just would repeat all day long. I'd be in the gym lifting for an hour and a half, all, all of it. So every day it was roughly five and a half to seven hours that I was in there every single day. You must have smelled like ass. Yeah, I mean, I would take a shower, bro. <laughs> I just had to, I had to throw something at you. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's, that's amazing. But that's oh, like, here comes Tyler. Yeah, that, that after his sixth <laughs> workout today in his last full, class, full cafeteria clears out. <laughs> that's crazy, dude. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that's what's funny to me, like working with the kids now. It's like you guys have no idea what this shit takes oh yeah. bro that video no of you tearing those kids apart no idea oh yeah. it brought me joy did yeah, you guys no see idea. the video yes of him tearing these kids apart he was like you don't understand your parents work fucking hard and you're yeah. here in practice right now and you're not even taking it serious do they get it though like because no. they're so young no. they don't get it right no, no. oh that no. came across pretty clear to me because I, I got like it I at like, that age like i understood that yeah. at 15 16 years old something's like, totally i mean I don't know the what generation it is. of kids. It's social media. Yeah, it's, I think it it's is. all social media, bro. Yeah, yeah. They like soft ass motherfuckers. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Are you you sure it's not like demographical? Like, are like, w do you see a difference in people from different areas? No. It's all them. All the yeah. generation. Yeah, bro. It's the propagation machine. Yeah. Is I mean, I have social media. I have Come kids on. Kids from like literally every walk of life, from the inner city to the country where I grew up, and in between, money, no money, like, and every kid is just like the same. They're just bratty fucks. They just don't. They don't know how to fucking work hard. Even yeah. the kids that don't like. I would think if I was in a situation where I didn't have money, I would fucking work hard to get money. Right. And they're just content with not having money. Right. It's like, do you still see a lot of competitiveness in kids and no. people? No. See, like, I feel see, like that's, that's where it's more up. like rooted in. Yeah. I, um, I like want kids to fight sometimes on the floor. Yeah. Oh, no, I it's know. Like, where is that? It's gone. Nobody. Zero. Not a single. Bro, in, the, in our office, sales office, we try to create friction between guys yeah. sometimes. Yeah. You know? It's like you need that yeah. masculine. I put them in specific situations where I'm like, go figure it the fuck out but you got to compete and you got to want the shit and they both just like lay flat on the ground give up yeah That's i mean crazy. the guys that you really see it with are the ones that are already in college 
you know, and already you're playing at that level. Mm-hmm. Um, so don't get me wrong. Like I, it's not like I have zero kids. That of are course. Like that. There's, there's a couple, but mm-hmm. it's few and far between, mm. you know. Where do you think the future of the NBA? Do you think it, the NBA is getting better or worse? Worse. Too offensive-oriented, too boring to watch just because the scores are 130 to 125. They need to fix, or not even fix, but they just need to go back to some of the older rules, honestly. Allow the defense to be more physical, hand-checking, simple shit like that um, with the entertainment aspect of the high-flying dunking and all that bullshit that they, you know, so... I think it's just worse because it's so offensive oriented. They just want scoring to go through the roof to get views and all that stuff. Uh, at the end of the day, what's your message to everybody out there? Uh, my message to everybody out there. Fuck. I don't know. Work. Get money. <laughs> yeah, I knew you were going to have some answer. Wait, I, that might be one of my favorites. <laughs> just work and get money. Yeah, you heard it here, fucking kids. No. That's a great message. Figure it out. Yeah. That's Figure a great it message. the fuck out. Work hard. <laughs> Make money and figure it the fuck out. <laughs> you heard it here, kids. Yo. All right. All right. See you, folks. March 30th. Pictures? Where's my fucking table that I can stand on? Yo, 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 oh, you yo. fucking want to be famous. <laughs> Guys are looking sharp. Zach Dingy. Tony Capoletti. Two Hoops, Three Legs Podcast, where we share business tips, interview experts, and travel the world. This week on Two Dudes, Three Legs.